One thing I want to know about is in the past lineups of Fnatic, it was actually the opposite problem. They had all this talent on paper. People were even voting them every year, like all LCS players. But then they would always seem to have some sort of like a disconnect in terms of how they wanted to play in the game. So famously, if you ever listen to the vo like Mike Checks, it would be like Hillisang and fucking Bwipo trying to get their way into every single fight. Meanwhile, like Reckless and fucking whoever back then could have been Brox and Nemesis. They were always trying to be like, no, no, back off, back. We don't take this down. So there was clearly like a fundamental disconnect in how people want to play. With this squad, even though it's like it role swapped player, totally inexperienced player. In theory, people don't think of guys like Niski as like a big voice necessarily. How have you managed to solve that? Because this fanatic looks a lot cleaner in that regard. Like it looks like the identity of the team is a lot more established than even cause that played many more years together. Oh, uh, what I've tried to do is I've tried to guide the players to solve their own problems. I, I realized in, in, in the past, uh, and, and it feels so outdated at this point in time, you know, in the past, maybe like in season five, when I was working with Rocket, I would hold reviews and I would just show them a bunch of things. And then half of the time, two people are looking at the ground and they're like sitting like this. And someone is like scratching their leg and someone is playing with some random object they found, right? It's just hard to keep <laughs> keep, keep them engaged, right? Because it's it turns into school. So so what I'm basically doing is I'm, I'm pushing them to solve their own problems. I'd rather sit there and listen and then I'll just wait and if the things that I would say are being said, then I just, okay, guys, let's do this. You, you guys solve the problem because in the end, on the rift, they need to solve their own problems. They need to solve their own emotional problems. And I'd rather push them to strengthen that ability. And uh, in terms of um, how the game is going to pl be played out, I believe that you can play out the game correctly in many different manners and i would rather have the solution come from them because sure i have my own philosophy and how i view the game and sometimes we we have you know a battle of ideas uh, that can be very beneficial and fruitful uh, but at the end of the day i need my players to believe in the league that they're playing and i push them to solve their own issues uh, in terms of how uh, they want communication to be handled because for example i could be offended by someone you know calling me a, a slur in the middle of the game, right? Oh, uh, yeah, oh, what the fuck, just TP, you motherfucker, whatever, right? And then maybe some other player doesn't get offended and he gets motivated by it, right? So always with the dynamic, I can't inject myself into it because I need to play the game through them somewhat. And so the whole idea of uh, the approach we're taking in this summer is to push the five players to solve their own problems. And I'm kind of like the backbone. I'm, I'm the final like uh, piece if something isn't said or isn't mentioned. And I think this goes uh, a, a super long way because in the end, you know, they're actively and engaged in the process of uh, improvement. And I think that has helped us super much. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, as I would say, listen to that idea, like listening to five players, letting them have their input, figure out their own issues, don't want to import too much. It could work. Fancy chat. Uh, sorry, that. Fancy that. So I, <laughs> edit, edit that out, please. Edit. And that was a pure accident. So that, was, that was an accident. I, I, I think, too, um, just based on kind of the perception is that both at times reckless and self-made were rather selfish players in the way that they approach the game. And in a way, like the roster that you've constructed and the method that you're using seems much more beneficial because look, I don't know Adam at all. Right. But the rest of the players that you have, um, like tend to be a bit quieter, a bit more reflective in their nature, like especially knowing Niski and Bwipo. Um, and tend to just kind of voice their own criticism in a more passive way. And it, so it seems like the new roster is kind of a more gentle slash team focused approach, reflective approach than I would have perceived other rosters to be. Is, has that been true? I mean, you've, you've coached so many teams. What is, what is different about these players' attitudes? Well, I, I think, you know, like I, I try to separate the the personalities from what i expect from them because like for example if if, if i didn't uh, engage in the reviews and mostly like upset and people would just constantly talk and some of the people that are less accepted like like okay. Nisky, would so, so never let, have me, the opportunity to talk, let me right? let me clarify here what, what i mean yes, because yes. people are going to be like oh you mean like whipple obviously fucking loves to talk like uh, upset yes. is very vocal <laughs> it's not about being vocal it's in the way that they express themselves is that whippo almost has like when you when he talks he's almost like 
figuring out his own thoughts while he talks as yes, opposed yes. to telling other people what he thinks. And I found Nisky to be the same, a, a, a similar in many ways in my conversations with him, where he's engaging in a dialogue to learn something about himself, not to tell you what he knows, if that, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. And, and, and sometimes that can be, you know, golden. That can be like the, the best thing, you know, just hearing his, uh, you know, his, his thoughts just flowing. And sometimes we go on tangents and all of a sudden he's teaching us how to cut a pineapple without wasting. Like it, it just yeah. goes into tangents, right? So I just make sure that the conversation is started in, in the right direction. And sometimes like we, we have, for example, uh, Hilly and Adam, they aren't as uh, as talkative. So I just push them forward, like I elevate them. Oh, what do you think? You know, they just, just simple things, simple uh, nudges like that uh, uh, go a long way, you know? and. Uh, that's that's like if I compare the differences between this team and um, like, for example, in spring, I think the mistake I did in spring was I took for granted that I'm joining Fnatic and I just, you know, these players have smacked me. I've been smacked by Fnatic uh, my whole league career. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come here and, and learn things, learn their way. Right. So I just forgot what I believe in, like I didn't didn't pursue what I believe in, I didn't push for the culture that I believe in, and this is something that I've tried to achieve in um, every team that I've worked with. Like this is the environment we had in Vitality, but the, the difference between Vitality and this team was we were almost like barbarians in Vitality. We had this confidence about ourselves, like when we were loud and we were big, that made us, you know, perform. We had this confidence about that. Like we walk into a game, it was as if we step into war. And with these boys, it's a little bit more different. They want to joke a little bit more. They want to, you know, be a little bit uh, rash with each other. And that's okay, right? Because this is their dynamic. But at the core of it, what I try to push for is just to make sure that everyone's engaged in the process and that they actually care about one another. Like I want a group that wants to solve problems. If we have a problem in the top lane, it's not an Adam problem. It's a team problem. We're going to attack it together because I think this is, you know, the only way to, to do things accurately. I think sometimes you fall into those holes where you try to solve too many problems at once and you end up solving nothing. And I think this is what happened to us in spring. And I think past Fnatic lineups was just, they found success because they had just five professionals pretty much that just figured out their own shit, you know? It wasn't necessarily team play. They just kind of made, you know, band-aid solutions to to kind of give in to one another. It's like, oh, this is how you play. I disagree with it, but I'm just gonna give in, you know? And yeah. that goes just that goes just that far. It doesn't get you far enough if you want to like win. You need to have agreement. You need to have uh, you know you need to believe in what you're doing. I, I feel, and I think uh, this is what. Uh, would be different if I compare this fanatic lineup to maybe uh, some of the past ones, uh, uh, I would say, yeah. Dude, think how crazy this is. If this was LCS instead of LEC, you know some of the stories from past years of Fnatic teams where, like, right up until the end of the summer split, it becomes like a pressure cooker scenario where, like, all the stories are like, player A is going this way next season, player B, there's no way he's going to be there, player C hates player A, the management are losing control, everything's going to shit, they're never going to even go and then somehow they always play top three, they go to Worlds, it all gets recovered, most of the players stay on the roster. Dude, if this was LCS, like, Reckless would have been benched years ago, Every, everyone would have been fucking benched. That's just the new approach they're taking in LCS now, like, what people don't know is the amount of times top LEC teams have not figured it out, but just come together like your senior Martin with a crazy band-aid fix, like in week seven out of nine, and it just happened to work. And it doesn't mean you're at your best. Like it means you might even know I'm going to go to Worlds and probably get my ass beat. Like we can only play one and a half stars of League of Legends, but you just do it because you have to do it to get the results at the end. Like, what do you think as someone looking out and across to LCS in this regard? I mean, these stories must be bizarre seeing, you know, teams benching star players every bloody week. And what do you think on some of these issues? It's, it's, it's very strange to me because, like, I, I know that, like, I, I have the expectation for my players that they shouldn't involve their ego into the team. And that's a very difficult thing to do because the community celebrates big egos, right? Oh. And there's like this, there's this dilemma that uh, every pro player faces. And with that, 
that the same thing applies for me, right? It's the saying, like, there's no player bigger than the team, but there's definitely no fucking coach that is bigger than the team either, uh, in my mind, right? Maybe in traditional sports, it's very different because I could be like a wise man that has a lot of experience, 40 years of, of football experience, sure. that's going to be relevant. Sure, yeah. But what I, what, I, what I knew in season two, three, four, five, you know, maybe it's relevant a little bit, but, you know, I can teach you how to lane swap, but they fucked it with the third change, right? So sure. it's completely irrelevant, right? <laughs> So the key difference for me is just, uh, you know, like when you have, uh, like the, the key thing I look at is motivation and intent. Sometimes like in, in teams that I've worked with, we've had harsh arguments. We've had heated arguments. There's been things that if they came out to the public, it would be like, what the fuck is happening? But it's, it's the context of all the time that we spend together. It's like, I don't know, how, it's, it's countless amount of hours that that players and, 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 and teams just in general spend together. Like just today, we spent more than 10 hours together and now I'm here and then afterwards I'm going to call them up and we're going to talk about 11.13 and we're going to continue. So we spent countless of hours together. And in those heated moments, the key thing is just motivation and intent. And sometimes emotions have a way of manifesting themselves. Sometimes someone can get angry and pissed off, but maybe in the back of it, there's a good reason. So you just need to dig a little bit deeper. If I, if my ego gets hurt in that moment, you know, we're not going to progress because that's the only thing I want. I want to progress. I want the players to believe the same. So I need to, of course, abide by those principles too. If I expect it from them, they should be able to expect it from me. So in moments where a star player has been behaving bad or something i just need to dig a little bit deeper what's what's going on there there has to be a reason because in the end as long as i know this guy wants to win there will be a way right there will be a way 100 if i can know for sure this guy wants to win and his intentions are that he wants to win and it's not just malicious it's like fuck this i'm leaving this team i want to fucking piss off you know when he's when he's just out of the team then it's just a different conversation but if he's just angry and emotional and you can see the intent behind it i think this is where i would draw uh, the line and i've never come across a player who's like that just completely gives up on it well never I, I think it's been like two occasions and and i've worked with maybe 200 players right yeah most of the time players do want to win and i think that's that's the difference and i think that that's a really good approach for a veteran coach is like as long as they're angry you know that they still are passionate about results right it's when they're apathetic that you really have the fundamental issue that might you know necessitate a roster change but if they're if they're pissed off they still have some level of motivation to win and competitive people tend to get angry about not winning so you can tell the passion at least is still there you just have to figure out what the solution to that is oh for sure it's like if if i, I don't get it like in traditional sports you can just dig a little bit deeper and you can see some of the shit that these players do, the, the way they behave and they fuck around and, you know, it's they're, they're divas and, and all that shit. You know, it's it's, it's common, but that's that's the beauty of, of management, right? You figure these people out. Like, as as a staff, you should find, you, you should have pride in being able to support a player that you know has potential and then you figure out the puzzle uh, that that human being is. I think that's what uh, is exciting about coaching, right? So it's, it's strange to me the moment, you know, ego gets in the way. It's like, oh, he goes against what I believe in. Oh, he's fuck this guy. You know, I don't, I don't believe in this ever. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.